for several people out there who are using the uh, tower gardens, one of the things that uh, comes into play quite often is refilling the uh, reservoir that you see right there. And I have been looking at uh, several different options, and I have done a lot of uh, float valves in the past and decided that uh, this is going to be the year that I'm going to simplify my tower garden. First off, uh, if you look at where it's sitting, it's on some uh, square concrete stepping stones and surrounded by recycled uh, tire rubber mulch. And I don't have to worry about uh, wood mulch breaking down. The fabric underneath is going to prevent weeds. And this just kind of juts off of the existing landscaping on the back of the house. But the float valve that you see here is from a company called Carrot, and I'll put that in the uh, notes of this video. And the way that this uh, float valve works is that water uh, comes out of the base of it right here. And this uh, curved part up at the top should be centered going straight up. And underneath, let me see if I can give you a close-up of the underneath side. There you go. Uh, the water comes out of the base of this, and this little arm that comes out will lift up as the uh, water fills and that float valve goes up, and that uh, puts pressure against where the water flows in. And then uh, as the water drops um, in the reservoir, more water from the feed outside of the uh, tank will flow into it. And that keeps it topped off at a static level. In order to get the uh, hole drilled to the side, and this is going to be what a lot of people are afraid of, because after paying a lot for a tower garden, uh, the last thing you want to do is mess it up. The uh, drill bit that is in the portable drill I have here is 7 16 inch. And if you look at the uh, side of the tower garden, there is a hole in these units to start with, and that's where the pump cord comes out. Now, what you don't want to do is put your float valve so high that all you're doing is uh, constantly flowing water out of that hole. So with the Carrick M252 mini float valve, it's very simple to find where to put that because there's a couple lines. Let's see if I can get in a little closer where you can see there. There's a couple lines that go right below that larger hole where the uh, cords come out. And I don't want my valve right up where the cords might interfere with it. And so what I did is I came over and I drilled a hole just resting on top of the uh, lower line on the side of that container. After cleaning up the hole, what I did was I took the float valve mechanism. Uh, there's a wing nut right here, and I loosened that and I straightened out the float valve because you could have it in different positions and uh, actually bend down or bend up a little bit. But straight out like this is where I'm using mine. And snug that uh, wing nut down. And this float valve has a threaded pipe on the back side that comes through the wall of the reservoir. Now there was a rubber gasket and that rubber gasket goes on before you uh, pass it through. So behind this gray piece is a lighter colored rubber gasket. On the back side is that pipe I was telling you about. And the uh, white plastic piece is a plastic nut. Now, the uh, purpose of that plastic nut is just to snug that rubber piece up against the wall of the reservoir and that keeps it from leaking out. I finger tightened the nut on mine and then I took a pair of pliers and just gave it a small half turn, quarter turn, uh, just to give it a little bit more of a uh, tight fit without over tightening. The rubber tubing that I'm using is just uh, micro irrigation tubing that I got from the local hardware store. 
you can buy specialty tubing, but this irrigation tubing seems to work just fine. Uh, this nut comes with the float valve, and this bushing comes with the float valve as well. So if we were to slide that bushing up a bit, what we'll do is we're going to insert that tubing into that pipe on the back side and once that hits i'm going to push in and that way it uh, fits all the way in now with a, a little bit of pressure i'm going to do this with uh, one hand i'm going to take this collar i'm going to slide it up make sure that it's threaded correctly and just continue to screw this on until the uh, nut that I'm screwing on right now is snugged down. And that would be your supply for the water to top off. Now, the nice thing about this is you can take the opposite end of this, and there are several uh, parts out on the market right now that would allow you to come right off an outdoor uh, hydrant on the side of your house and run well water or city water um, through low pressure into your container for top off and the valve itself is also rated for gravity feed so if you were to have a large uh, container uh, say like a rain barrel or something like that, you can drill a 10 millimeter hole through the side of that. You can put a quarter inch top hat grommet uh, into it, and I'll put that in my notes as well. And then this piece doesn't even have to be glued. You could just uh, uh, wet it down a little bit and slide it into that top hat grommet, and that's all you need for a gravity feed and that would be a simple way to put your tower garden out someplace um, in the yard where you don't have uh, close access to a hydrant. Now, the benefits of the gravity feed is that you could put your nutrients in there and uh, gravity feed uh, whatever strength nutrient that you want, or you can actually uh, choose to add your nutrients manually and then hook this up to your hydrant and just use that for water top off only but you can tell how simple this whole process is and i didn't have any uh, concerns about cracking when i was drilling i just went slow with that 7 16 inch bit and uh, took my time and it, it went right through a nice clean hole had to wipe it down a little bit from all the uh, plastic shavings but uh, there you go uh, it's going to be a time saver for a lot of you